Any idea about femur? Femur, this is the femur, huh? Yes. Femur. Ah. In the thigh, good. Bone of the thigh. Vishal. Enough. Ah. Yes. Any idea about femur? Ah. The largest bone. Largest bone, very good. Strongest as well. The largest and strongest bone in the world, I must say. Because we are teaching with our humans, so humans have this is the largest and strongest bone. Further. Longest. Longest, good. Connect the pelvis with the knee joint. Very good. If you measure, there is a very good formula for femur. If you measure the whole femur in inches and you just multiply by it three, you get the height of a man. Okay? So this is one of the very good features for femur. So from head to here, ah. Good. Let them come and I will start it again. Okay. So let us start with Bismillah ar rahim Femur. Femur is the other name, the other name is thigh bone. Okay. This seems like two groups or one group. One group. Okay. Uh, longest and strongest bone. Sign determination. Whenever you are given a bone, an exam or anywhere in the world, you must be able to find the sign, right or left. Okay? The side you must be able to find. For example, like for a hip bone. You know how to hold a hip bone? So yes. How, how yes. right or left? How to find right or left? <laughs> uh, in, the, in the angle, in the deep angle. Okay, this one. This one, yeah. Um, you hold it like this and okay. then... Yeah, and yeah, then with your no, it's wrong. Right hand. You have to be able to uh, put your fingers on the. Uh, yeah. Still in the stamina? No, but this side. You have to cover it. <laughs> yes, this is right. Yes. Okay, this is the right hip bone. Very good. How you have to make your this notch into this notch? Okay, don't tell anyone. This is the formula, just to hold, and your all fingers should move in. And remember, the ischial dubrosity, the ischial dubrosity which is rough and heavy should be back and inferior, okay? The other lighter pubic bone must be in front. Here, I can do it or I can do it. But no, this is the actual, so wherever it is fitting, it is the right side. So, similarly, a femur, very easy to understand, very easy to handle the bone. You, have, you know, the bone speaks itself. This is the head. This is the neck, this is the upper end hole. So the upper end is composed of head, neck and these two trochanters. What is greater and lesser trochanter? What is trochanter? The mukabbar is some for tubercle. Okay? So tubercle is a small elevation and a very big elevation is trochanter. So here is a trochanter. Another trochanter. This should be a tubercle but it is so greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. Then, this upper end, then we have a lower end and a shaft. Okay? How to find right side or left side? Keep the head up. Immediately. Whenever you hold the bone, you must hold the bone in anatomical position. So that you must be able to find where is the medial side, where is the lateral side, where is the anterior, where is the posterior. If even I hold it like this or like this, I am confused where is the upper, where is the lower. So always it may be radius, it may be Allah, it may be anything. You must hold it in an anatomical position. Most of the long bones in the body, they are vertically lined. So it's easy to hold them. Number one. Number two, upper end, lower end and the shaft. Let's see what is in the upper end. I will go very slow, one by one, showing parts here, showing you pictures. I hope it will be easy to understand. Upper end. Uh -huh. Before side determination, the head must be up and towards the medial side. Yes. It can be like this. It's up and still on the medial side. Mm -hmm. But you must see the notch here on the lower end. See here the notch. See here no notch. See here the notch. The notch must face me. Yani on the posterior side. So only then it is the side determination is done. So it is now right sided femur. Similarly, if I give you this femur, again, the head is on the medial side, the trochanter is okay, where it should be? Not should go back. So it is the left sided bone. Clear Shiba? Yes. Good. Now let us start with the parts. Upper end, 
then shaft, then lower end. What is the upper end? This all is upper end. Composed of head, neck, greater trochanter, greater trochanter. Trochanter is, is a mukabar for tubercle. So it's a trochanter. Then here is a lesser trochanter. See here, lesser trochanter, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. Then we have intertrochanteric line. In the front, we have a line which is not very much appreciated. It's not very heavily formed, not rough yani. As compared on the back, we have a very rough, tough structure crossing between the two or connecting the two. This is called intertrochanteric crest. So, for side determination, this is also, if you find crest, must make it on the back. Okay? Again, the notch should be back, head up and medially, and the notch back. This will make you the right sided bone. Again, the parts. Head. You can see the head is very well formed and it is there. The, the, this smooth part is there covered with acid, uh, hyaline cartilage so that it can make a joint with a hip bone like this. Okay? This is acetabulum of the hip bone and this is the head so they will make a very nice uh, ball and socket joint here. Shaft, we will see the borders then we will see the lower end. You can appreciate the lower end is divided in two parts. Okay, the lower end is divided in two parts. These are called condyles. These are called condyles. These circular areas, these are called condyles. So, there is a lateral condyle, there is a medial condyle. What is the true anatomical position of the bone? It's not just vertical, okay? It's like slightly axis so that this two condyles should stay on one line. Okay? It's not like straight. Two condyles should stay on a straight line. So this is the anatomical position of so anatomical position of femur. With me? Yes. Any questions? I'm welcome. You, you. Sorry. No problem. Okay. Then upper end head makes the hip joint. You know this. Yes. The very well formed ball and socket variety of the joint, hip joint. Acetabulum of the hip bone, this is the acetabulum of the hip bone, this one. Acetabulum of the hip bone is there to make a ball and socket joint. Fovea, if you appreciate the head, the head is having a depression. All this part of head is covered with hyaline cartilage, except this central part. This is called fovea. Fovea, ligamentum teres or round ligament of head is attached here. See here, the round ligament is attached. There is a special ligament which is there to stabilize the hip joint. Is there which is called ligamentum teres or round ligament of head here mojood. You can appreciate this ligament is attached to this part of acetabulum. This is the one same ligament. We cut it to show you the attachment. This is continuous here. Is visible? Is it visible? Yes. Here. Blue one. This ligament yes. is visible here. Yes. See, this ligament is actually continuous here. When we will see in the small groups, I will call you and I will show you the area. Mm -hmm. This is called ligamentum teres or fovea. The head has a very special role in blood supply. Appreciate here. Here is the ligament and from the ligament there is a blood vessel entering here. Which part? See, this is obturator foramen. From the obturator foramen, obturator artery enters into this ligament and continues into the head like this. It will give some branches on the top of the head to give some anastomosis with other branches here. What are the other branches? Medial and lateral circumflex femoral. In the femoral artery, femoral triangle I told you there is a femoral artery giving two branches medial circumflex femoral, lateral circumflex femoral. Whenever there is a name circumflex it means it is something rotating like this. So medial and lateral circumflex femoral, they make a circle here and from this circle these blood vessels they arise. These are called retinacular. Retinaculum yani straight. So retinacular arteries they are straight, they are again anastomosing with each other and there is some degree of anastomosis between this and this group of vessels. 
What is the main vessel here? Obturator. What are the main vessels here? Medial and lateral circumflex femoral. And now these are called retinacular arteries. Whenever there is a fracture of neck of the femur leading to any disturbance to this group of vessels, the head loses its blood supply because this small vessel is not enough to give nutrition to this. This leads to a very important condition clinically known as ischemic necrosis of head of femur. See here is the proper head. Here after fracture ischemic necrosis of the head of femur is one of the very important thing you must remember. Till? No, no, two days before. Okay? So here again, are, are you clear? Am I clear? Yes. Head, neck, shaft. These retinacular arteries, these are the branches from medial and lateral circumflex femoral. When they are damaged in case of fractures or if there is a dislocation here like this, the blood vessel from here is dis distracted, it ruptured. So this is going to happen leading to a condition called as ischemic necrosis of the head of femur. This is most important point here clinical, clinically. Yes, you will ask. Any question? Upper end neck. This is the neck. This head, this is neck. Around 1.5 centimeter long. Here is the neck. Huh? This is the neck. Yes. This is the neck. And neck and shaft angle is 125. It means here is the shaft, here is the head, here is greater trochanter, lesser trochanter, and here is the bone. Okay? This is the neck. The neck is around 125. The angle is less in females. It means what? Here? Well, here. Here. Here? Where is the angle? Here is the angle. Go down. So it must be around here. Good? Making the angle of 120 around in females. Less 5 or 6 degrees. Why? Because of the wider pelvis in the female. So two hip bones make a pelvis with the sacrum. They are wide in females. That is the reason the angle of this is like not is slightly down like this in case of females. With me? Yes. Okay. Upper and lower borders. Where is the upper border? Here is the upper border of neck. We are saying border of neck. Huh? Neck. There, lower border. Anterior surface, posterior surface. Yes. See here. Head, neck. Neck has upper border, lower border, anterior surface, posterior surface. Clear? Yes. The angle. You must remember 125 average is for males and it is less even in small few 5-6 degrees less in female. Greater trochanter. Here is a greater trochanter. This structure is called greater trochanter. It is a bigger form of tubercle. So greater trochanter, a larger quadrangular, quadrangular yani? Murupa. Murupa yani. Quadrangular prominence, you can see, appreciate the quadrangular. It has an upper border. On the upper border, there is an elevation. This is called apex. See here. This is an elevation. Here, this is the topmost point is called apex of. Then trochanteric fossa. Where is trochanteric fossa? Here, inside. Inside. You can you can appreciate. See, this greater trochanter. See inside, there is a depression. There is fossa. Intertrochanteric fossa. Anterior, medial, lateral surface. Anterior surface. Medial surface in the fossa and lateral surface. Forget them. Lesser trochanter, conical in shape. This is small. Lesser trochanter, here. Lesser trochanter. Less, you are uncomfortable or what? Yeah, I'm uncomfortable. Take this here. No problem. No, no, okay. I'm okay. Uh -huh. Take this. <laughs> try I this. Want to, I want to stand. Uh, that's another thing. Try, try this. No problem. Okay. Enter, okay. Lesser trochanter, this small conical shape is lesser trochanter. Intertrochanteric line and crest. What is line? On the front, on the front, there is just an impression, yeah. hardly appreciable. This is called line. On the back, posterior aspect, there is a very strong ridge, elevation. You can feel it's very rough, and this is called intertrochanteric crest. On the posterior aspect, there is a quadrant, there is a quadrate tubercle here. Quadratus femoris. Quadratus femoris inserted here. Remember, 
quadratus femoris and quadriceps femoris two different stories you know quadratus femoris is one of the muscle in the gluteal region quadriceps femoris is here for vastus medialis lateralis rectus and intermedius they will make a tendon patella enclosing sabuna patella clear don't mix them huh? shaft shaft is this cylindrical part of the bone narrow in the middle you can appreciate it's very narrow here so if a bone is narrow in the middle it means the possibility of fracture is the this side if the shaft is fractured but usually old age osteoporotic patients especially females elderly they have more chances of fracture of the neck because this is an angulated structure three borders obvious in the middle only otherwise we don't see this is circular almost circular almost we don't appreciate borders in the back you will appreciate a very thin sharp border the posterior border the other name is linea aspera the posterior border is called linea aspera what is linea aspera if you follow this bone i think this if i write it will be removable yeah, yeah. yes okay here this is the linea aspera and if you appreciate on a bone you will find the two lips here and united here and again open here this structure on your bones you you can appreciate this all is called linea aspera so in the middle there is a thin rough area here it is open here it is open so here anterior surface posterior surface medial surface lateral surface here anterior surface the surface is the same but this triangle this muscles has a special name popliteal surface and this is the area for popliteal fossa you remember now i told you a diamond shaped space so superior lateral superior medial approximately this is facing the the the, the popliteal fossa with me yes. yeah so where is the the crest which crest the one the earlier one then sir was it intertrochanteric crest yeah. ah here on the front there is intertrochanteric line yes on the back there is a heavy structure this is called crest intertrochanteric crest always write when in exam don't write just crest write intertrochanteric crest okay don't write just muhammad muhammad bin abdullah al fala 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 shaft i told you thus just posterior aspect is linea aspera this is what i draw for you initially so this all is called posterior border is called linea aspera linea aspera will kill you sometimes why because there are so many small muscles can you differentiate these muscles here no at least even you can unable to see what we will do when we will finish this session i will show you each muscle on this bone okay we will do it in small groups but to make your life less miserable yes <laughs> i have drawn this picture enlargement of this to show you certain attachments but don't worry we will do it on 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 later on no after 10 minutes inshallah lower end lower end is this is the lower end of the bone the lower end has two condyles the big semi circular or oval shaped structures these are called condyles they are medial and lateral the bigger one medial yes the bigger one follow the head the bigger one is medial condyle and if you keep the bone very straight the it looks like it is hanging more down as compared to the the lateral which is smaller but remember the angle of the bone the position of the bone is not very straight the position is like this yes keeping this line as a straight line here on a straight line so this is obvious that this shaft has more bone transmission on this condyle even it is small okay if you see the bone and if we put it on a very straight line like it is mojood in the anatomical position you find the bone is more in line or the shaft is more in line with the smaller or the lateral condyle so lateral condyle although it is smaller in size than the medial 
but still it has more responsibility of weight transmission in the bottle. Yes. Clear this point? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So yes, flat laterally, lateral weight transmission, lateral epicondyle. Okay. What is condyle? What is epicondyle? Epicondyle. If you follow, condyle. if you follow a condyle, here is a condyle for example. Okay. Here is a condyle. On the condyle, there is still an elevation. This is called epicondyle. Epi on. The big one is a condyle. Okay. This hole is a condyle. This hole is a condyle. On the condyle, there is an epicondyle. See, appreciate here. This is a full condyle and this is an epicondyle. Okay. There is a condyle and if you feel on it, lateral and medial both sides, there is an epicondyle. So lateral condyle, lateral epicondyle. Medial condyle, medial epicondyle. Good? Yes. On the lateral condyle, you will appreciate a groove. On the lateral condyle, you will appreciate a groove. This is called popliteal groove. This is called popliteal groove. So popliteal muscle tendon is entering into the knee. We will see in the joints class. Okay? Again. Again, 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 please. Lower end, lateral condyle. Flat laterally, greater part in weight transmission. Remember, lateral epicondyle and popliteal groove. See the structures again. This is the lateral condyle. It's more in line with the shaft. So it is more involved in bone transmission, uh, weight transmission. Here is the lateral condyle with some elevation on the top. This is called epicondyle. Since this is lateral condyle, so this is lateral epicondyle. And after this epicondyle, there is a groove popliteal groove with me okay sir don't worry i will show you all these small structures here with me huh? only on the lateral condyle is a groove and only on the medial condyle is a tubercle i am coming okay remember here please medial condyle the bigger one medial epicondyle you know it adductor tubercle see here is the lateral condyle here was the groove Please see Here is the lateral condyle, here was the groove. Here is the medial condyle, here on the posterior aspect is a tubercle. Called adductor tubercle. Adductor magnus attached here. Adductor tubercle. See again. Here is the condyle, lateral condyle with groove, epicondyle, medial condyle. On the posterior aspect there is a tubercle, this adductor tubercle. Adductor tubercle. I will show you. Don't worry. About the popliteal surface. Popliteal groove here. The muscle attached. It's not attached. It's just crossing. Popliteus muscle. What's its origin? Yes. We'll see in the leg. Don't worry. It has. It's some typical structure. Popliteus muscles is very important to know when we have a tibia and fibula right together like this. Okay. When a person is standing here, okay, when I am putting my full weight on the ground, yani full weight transmission, the there is some degree of rotation in the femur so that the two bones become connected to each other and this condition is called lock, locking of the knee joint. Locking. Locking is a condition when I am straight standing and in locking condition I cannot flex my leg. For flexion to start, there should be first the backward movement of femur, a slight rotation and then only the flexion is possible. This is called unlocking and then flexion. The key for unlocking is popliteus. Okay? So popliteus muscle is the key to unlock the knee joint. Remember, not even two days before. Till. <laughs> Till. Clear now? Lower end, medial condyle. Here, medial condyle. Here, medial condyle. On the medial condyle, back you have a tubercle, adductor tubercle. Adductor magnus. Leave this. I have done it. Attachments. Most of the attachments which are coming here onto the upper end of the femur, they are coming actually from the hip bone. 
So you must know the origin of certain muscles and where they are going, like coordinatus femoris. It's not here. The blue is insertion, okay? So it is coming from the hip bone. We will see some attachments in a few minutes. Here are other attachments. This is just to go home and read them properly, which because in exams or some OSPs or some stations you can find it's a bone and they draw a color here. What is this muscle attached here? Or other bones like maybe here, a big muscle, aliacus like for example. What are the clinical importance for this bone? Neck fractures are very common in old elderly females especially. Shaft fracture and ischemic necrosis of head of female. I told you regarding ischemic necrosis, this is different varieties of fractures. You will deal with orthopedics, no need. Only try to remember that whenever there is a fracture of neck of femur and there is damage to the retinacular arterial system which is composed of medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries, if that is damaged, it can lead to a condition known as ischemic necrosis of head of femur. Any bone showing ischemic necrosis in the upper limb? Uh, the distal pharyngeal is open. No. That is gangrene. Okay. Scaphoid. Scaphoid bone. Where is scaphoid bone? Here is the lower end of radius. Here is the ulna. Here is the first. First scaphoid bone. Yes. Scaphoid bone has a blood supply from here. If there is a fracture, this part will go ischemic necrosis. So remember, the bone in the lower limb for ischemic necrosis commonly seen is the head of the femur and in the upper limb, scaphoid bone. Where is scaphoid bone? In the hand. You remember scaphoid, lunate, tricotral, cuneiform? Yes. You know the formula? Yes. Switch off this and then I will tell you the formula. We know the formula. She looks too pretty, try to catch her. Or Salma looks too pretty, try to catch her. She looks scaphoid, lunate, tricotral, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamid. Okay? Don't write formula in the exam. Write names. Don't write Salma. Write scaphoid. Okay. Scaphoid does not sound that pretty. <laughs> you are you are following the Salma. So here is the nervous part of the bone which is leading to fractures, the shaft. Some fractures can occur here in the lower end even, road traffic accidents or here like after the neck. This is the same picture showing you ischemic necrosis. This is osteoarthritis and ischemia. And for all, what I have just told you, all the names are here, okay? Just to revise and just to enjoy at home. Now, what we will, oh, close it. What we will do?